Hey everyone, welcome back to the lab. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to run a .NET 8 CLI app in a Docker container. So I recently shared a .NET CLI script that calls OpenAI's GPT-40 API using F Sharp. I'm kind of building a few apps that are gonna use some programmatic SEO, some kind of programmatic responses on data. And I wanted to build a prototype using a script, so that's what I did here. And I ran that script and really, I build most of my .NET apps this way, most of my web apps and stuff um, with Docker containers. And so here I'm gonna share how I use Docker to build and run my .NET CLI app. Okay, first let's just talk about the .NET CLI script to give you an idea of what we're containerizing here. So the example CLI script is very simple. Basically I'll use the .NET CLI to create a base CLI app for F Sharp, then add it in my extra logic on top of that. So um, .NET CLI, you know, your .NET run, basically has a way to build boilerplate projects, and I just use the very core one um, that sets up a very bare bones CLI version. You can learn more about um, that here and create a new F Sharp project from the command line. Basically, same thing works for C Sharp as well. Um, you just change the language parameter that you give it. And now you could certainly just run the script directly with .NET Run, but I personally prefer containers to create deterministic dev environments. This makes infrastructure as code possible, and I find it makes it easier to run and share my code across people and environments, which is very useful for me because, you know, I share a lot of my code examples out, um, but also it's useful as like a software engineer and builder um, because then I can just deploy it to basically any cloud environment that supports containers, which is all of them without having to worry about the run times. Um, and usually where we get in trouble with these things is if I'm targeting like a specific .NET version, um, maybe because I have certain libraries that require this or something, and then someone pulls down the code, but they maybe are on a different .NET version, like I'm running .NET 8, but they ha only have .NET 7 or something. And this is just something that is annoying and is totally avoidable by just using containers so that the app itself says what dependencies it needs. Um, and so I find this removes a lot of the like annoyances of sharing and deploying code. Um, and it's very simple to set up, so why not? All right, so with that understanding of the script and kind of why we're even using containers in the first place, um, let's talk about containerizing our .NET 8 CLI scripts. So in this example, I'm going to be containerizing an F Sharp script targeting .NET 8. This will also work for C Sharp. Um, they both target .NET, so basically the exact same thing, but you do need to change the Docker file to look for a .cs proj instead of a .fs proj um, because that's basically the only difference. Now it's to containerize our .NET 8 app, we basically need to create a Docker file, which is how we you know, tell Docker what we want it to do. Um, and then it's gonna have two steps. First is gonna be a build step, which basically takes all of our source code and stuff and builds it into like a runnable app. And then we're gonna have a run step, which is only doing the running. This is very common in um, Docker setups because usually the build step takes a while. Um, it might need to download a lot of files. It might need to like process things, but you basically want to publish an image that does as little work as possible so that it's fast to spin up. And so usually you'll do this um, and then you'll actually publish just the run step, which takes the artifacts from here um, and only does the running. This usually leads to like smaller image sizes, so easier for data transfer um, wherever you're deploying, um, but also faster spin up speeds, um, which is nice in you know, production environments if you're doing auto scaling or um, fast rollouts or something like that. Okay, and now we're gonna go over the code. Um, so I do have the full Docker file that I, I'm using for this project um, here. Um, if you just wanna look at it and copy and paste, but we'll also walk through kind of what it's doing and I'm gonna open it up in my Hemi Labs example repo as well, so we can get some code highlighting. I'm gonna also kind of show you that like, you know, these steps are actually what's uh, running it. And so here on the right, I have my um, Hemi Labs code examples repo set up. Um, and this is the Docker file that I'm actually using for one of my um, example projects. I've got dozens of example projects in here and Heminion's members do get access to this and all these dozens of projects, um, which makes it easier to kind of like get clone and run it yourself. But here's like a real live, um, Docker file that we'll be going over. And this is the same code that's uh, in the post if you wanna copy and paste it. All right, so let's go over um, what this is doing. So we're gonna start off with the build step and build step is here and the Docker file. And so basically what we're doing 
As first, we're going to create environment with the .NET 8 SDK. Um, and we're using the official Microsoft .NET SDK image. And we can see here that this is what we're doing. Um, and we do 8.0. If you're using 6.0 or whatever, you know, this is, you would change this number. And so we're calling this build. Then what we're going to do is basically copy our FS proj and restore dependencies. So here we're copying FS proj and then we're using .NET CLI, which we get um, because we're in this SDK image um, to run restore on it. And what this does is basically cleans our project, um, looks at the dependencies in the FS proj, and then goes to like NuGet and pulls them down. And we do this in a separate layer from actually publishing our app so that this is cached. Um, this is very common in Docker files to kind of have layers of things um, of work that's cacheable. So you probably start off at the most cacheable thing and then you go down to the least cacheable. And this is nice for improving build times because you can imagine that um, our code probably changes a lot um, but our dependencies change less frequently. And this is also like an expensive um, operation because it needs to go fetch the dependency and pull it down um, and stuff like that. And so if we can cache this, we can make this step much faster. And so that's what we do here. And then of course, the next step here is to copy the source code. So we get everything from our project and then we run .NET publish on it um, so that we actually get you know some artifacts that we can then run. I'm noticing that the bottom of the script, I'm kind of like in the way of. Um, so I'm opening this up in raw mode so that you can at least see um, this code here. And so next we have our run step. And basically what we're gonna do is create a new environment. Um, notice that we are again using official Microsoft image, but we're using a different one. Instead of the SDK that's up here, we're now choosing runtime. Um, we do this, and this is very, again, very common in Docker containers because the SDK is almost always gonna be much larger um, than the runtime itself. The tools you need to actually build the thing are gonna be larger than things to just run the simple you know, executable, if you will. And so we create a new layer here because this will allow us to have a much smaller image that we need to build, um, that we need to pull down, and then we, that, that we need to run. And so um, similar to how these are ways to make the time um, and size optimized, this is another version of that. So we just pull in the runtime for this, and then we copy all the artifacts from our build step up here um, into our new layer. And then we're gonna run the app um, here by referencing the DLL. Basically it's .NET, and then you run the DLL. Um, this is just you know the name of my project, um, but you would replace that with the name of your project or whatever um, the name of the output DLL is gonna be. Yep, and so again, um, you know that Docker file's here. If you want the full source code, to clone it and run it yourself. Um, link is here and you can join Himinians here. So now how do we actually like run the .NET 8 CLI app in the Docker container? So basically you just need to run the Docker container. For this, I use this Docker run um, dash dash rm dash it um, with this funky thing. This is like very cryptic, but basically what it does is it builds the Docker container in the current directory. This is how we do this. Um, I use the dash q to be like, don't output um, any of the logs because there's like a lot of them. And then it's going to run the Docker container in interactive mode um, for these scripts. It mostly doesn't matter, but you can imagine that for like a lot of scripts that are running CLI, maybe you want to give it input via the CLI. So interactive mode is nice for that. Um, and then what it does is it removes the image here using this RM, which is useful to prevent naming collisions or zombie containers later. Basically, it's like when you're done running, just like clean up yourself. Um, which is nice when you're, you know, running a lot of different containers all over the place. So yeah, a bit cryptic, but you know, you can just kind of copy and paste this and run it um, and it should work as expected. Next. So I'm a big fan of containers. They're the simplest scalable system I found for declaring infrastructure as code for projects large and small. Um, this is a big one for me because I think a lot of times things work well at small scale, but not large scale or large scale and not small scale. So I love finding systems that work good for both because then you don't have to like worry about changing it um, later. And I find this removes a lot of the pain of sharing project code, you know, to other people so that you can just, you know, find the repo, pull it down and run it yourself. Um, but also deploying to various clouds because, you know, AWS and Azure and Google Cloud and Railway and DigitalOcean, they all have like slightly different things. And this is kind of what contributes to their um, vendor lock-in. Their functions have different APIs. The runtimes that they use are slightly different. Um, so if you have containers though, basically everything supports containers. This is a one interface fits all. Um, and so you can kind of deploy anywhere. And it also kind of unlocks the vendor lock-in from the OS level um, as well, 
which is maybe not as useful to a lot of people, but I I'll often run many different computers that have different OSs, whether it's Windows or like Whistle, Linux, or Mac. And so this is helpful for me to develop on the same projects from my different computers um, so that I don't run into issues. So anyway, big fan of, of containers. Now this was an example of like, you know, a simple container for a CLI, but often CLIs like aren't really for production. You, you're probably gonna do like a web app or something else if you're doing containers. So if you're interested in seeing what a production web app looks like that is using containers to set up dev and prod deterministic builds, you might be interested in CloudSeed. This is my f -sharp project boilerplate that I use to start all my web apps, and it uses Docker containers to spin up local dev environments, including a full local database, and then allows it to publish its web app as a container for easy deploy to any cloud serverless container offering. And this is what I basically have used over the last several years um, to deploy all my websites to things like Google Cloud Run, a DigitalOcean app platform, um, Railway, things like that. Um, so it gives me a paved road so I don't have to set this up for every project. If you like this post, you might also like CloudSeed Quick Start, um, get a full stack F Sharp app in 10 minutes. You might also be interested in build a simple F Sharp web API with Giraffe, the basics of starting with F Sharp um, web app development. And then finally, if you're interested in like other weird things to do with .NET CLI apps, um, you might be interested in web scraping with F Sharp and Selenium, which at its core is using a CLI script that's also Dockerized itself. And I also have a C Sharp version of this, um, which is linked in here as well. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.